Ukrainian formations carried out a massive drone raid on the rear areas of Russia. At the moment, more than 20 targets are known to have been shot down. Five UVs were shot down in the sky over the Moscow region. Air defense shot down targets in the area of Narofomansk, Podolsk, as well as in the Romensky and Odintsovo urban districts. There is damage to the infrastructure, but no injuries have been reported. In the Kaluga region, targets were intercepted in the Dzerzinsky and Zakovsky districts. There were no wounded or damage. In Tula, one of the drones crashed into a residential high-rise building. A man received shrapnel wounds and has now been taken to the hospital. The second UAV was shot down near the first southeastern residential complex. The area is currently cordoned off. Another one was shot down by air defense crews in the sky over the region, and according to some reports, another one was suppressed by electronic warfare and fell within the city limits. In the Smolensk region, one UAV of the Ukrainian armed forces was suppressed on approach to the regional capital, but there were no casualties. In the Bryansk region, four drones were shot down on approach to the city and another one in the sky over the Karachevsky district. According to the authorities, there were no casualties or destruction. In the Starobelsky direction in the Kapiansky sector, there are no significant changes. Fighting continues on the outskirts of Sinkovka. The command of the armed forces of Ukraine transferred the 123rd TRO battalion from the rear to the front line. In addition, photographs of American Abrams tanks somewhere in this direction appeared online. Judging by the fact that the photographs were posted by Ukrainian media workers, this equipment has not yet been tested in battle. But if this happens, then soon we should expect new pictures with the Abrams on fire. In the Soldar direction south of Bakhmut, the Russian armed forces continue their offensive operation. According to some reports, it was possible to take several AFU strongholds on the outskirts of the village. At the same time, near Andrivka the AFU still holds strategic heights under their control. In the Avdivsky sector on the southern flank, the Russian army, after occupying strategic heights in the Yasinovat industrial zone, is equipping positions. The AFU launched a series of local counterattacks, trying to restore lost positions, but was unsuccessful. On the northern flank, the Russian armed forces are expanding control along the railway towards Novo Kalinovo. In the Orkovsky sector, Ukrainian formations repeatedly attacked the positions of Russian troops, but to no avail. Soldiers of the 42nd Motorized Rifle Division of the Russian Armed Forces repelled another AFU attack towards Rabatino, eliminating several pieces of equipment. In the Kherson direction, fighting continues in Krinky. The AFU holds the central part of the village. However, the Russian Armed Forces are conducting an active counter-battery fight and striking at the bases of motorboats and equipment of the armed forces of Ukraine, disrupting the AFU's rotation plans. Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Ukraine Valery Zaluzny does not have a war plan for 2024 and therefore must resign. Deputy Head of the Verkhovna Rada Committee on National Security and Defense, People's Deputy from the Servant of the People Mariana Bezaglea. Yes, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine was unable to provide a plan for 2024. Neither large nor small, either asymmetrical nor symmetrical. The military simply said that they needed to pick up a minimum of 20,000 citizens per month. This discussion was non-public. If the military leadership cannot provide any plan for 2024, and all their proposals for mobilization boiled down to the fact that more people are needed without any proposal for changes to the armed forces of Ukraine system, then such leadership must leave.